What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're answering this question. What is PEEP? Positive end expiratory pressure. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so this video, as I stated, is all about PEEP positive end expiratory pressure. There's a lot going on in this video. I have a Respond 19 ventilator here provided by Corvette Medical. Big thank you to them. I also have uh, my pig lungs set up today being ventilated by the Respond 19. Now, the reason I have this set up is because I want you to be able to visibly observe the changes in PEEP and what happens. So that by the end of this, you understand what PEEP is, how it aids and why it aids oxygenation, and three, how it affects static compliance. So let's just take a, a, a second here to kind of observe uh, what's happening currently. What we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna change a peak from five, peak to 10, peak to 15. And we are going to see what changes happen in the Excel title volume and what changes happen in static compliance. Now, as you can see right here, the ventilator is delivering an inspiratory breath and then exhalation happens. And the, the, the lungs deflate to the, the level for which I have my current PEEP set to, which is five. Now what we need to do here is say, okay, on five with an inspiratory pressure in pressure control of 15, what is our exhale tidal volume? Because we know if we put 15 centimeters of water pressure on top of five centimeters of water pressure of PEEP, then our peak inspiratory pressure is going to be 20. So the question is, is what is our exhale tidal volume? So when we take a look at that, we see currently right now, our exhale tidal volumes are 800. Now, I'm not saying that this is a tidal volume that you would want to deliver to your patient. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just making, basically I'm doing an experiment with you here on YouTube. So just go with it. That's the volume we're getting back with a peep of five and an inspiratory pressure change of 15 give us a peak inspiratory pressure of 20. So what we're going to do now is we're going to increase the peep from five to 10. We're going to see what happens. Now you're going to notice something here. Watch what happens. The lungs immediately got bigger on the next breath. See how they are being held open at a larger, uh, uh, at a state of, of increased surface area? Now this is important when we say increased surface area because they have gotten larger. This is exactly what fixed law tells us. That when we increase PEEP, we increase surface area and we decrease the thickness of the alveolar capillary membrane. And those two things together say that more gas will diffuse across that membrane than prior to. So increased surface area, decreased thickness leads to greater diffusion. So ultimately, in terms of respiratory therapy realm, the oxygen that is within the alveoli, more of that will cross over the alveolar capillary membrane from the alveoli into pulmonary circulation and ultimately into arterial circulation at a higher rate when we increase the surface area and decrease the thickness. Now, what we have to do is look at and say, okay, well, what are our exhale tidal volumes now? So if we take a look at that, we see that we have a tidal volume now of 900. So we now have a peep of 10. We're putting 15 centimeters of water pressure on top of that, and we're getting a larger tidal volume. Now, we're gonna raise this one more time. Let's see what happens when we go to a peep of 15. You're gonna notice this right now. The lungs got even bigger, even more surface area. So you may say, okay, well, so this is better, right? Well, we don't know that necessarily. We're going to find that out here in just a little bit when we calculate our compliance changes. And we also understand that this experiment done outside of a body that doesn't have a heart involved, this level of PEEP may impede cardiac function. 
We don't know because that's not the situation. So you always have to remember that peep as lungs get bigger and are held open at larger states, have the potential to compress the great vessels and compromise and, 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 and impede on pulmonary circulation, causing micro compression of the pulmonary capillaries. All of that is going to lead to a reduced amount of venous return and blood flow getting back to the left side of the heart. It's gonna cause a decrease in your blood pressure and a decrease in your cardiac output. So let's see what our XL tidal volumes are now. We're getting XL tidal volumes now of 600. So what we need to do now is calculate our static compliances, okay? And we'll figure out based off of this, which is the best peep for these pig lungs right now. So the formula for static compliance is tidal volume divided by plateau minus peep. Now we're in pressure control, so we are going to assume that that our peak inspiratory pressure is equivalent to our plateau pressure. This isn't always the case, especially in times of increased airway resistance. We have none of that going on right now, so we're going to, to say that our inspiratory pressure set and our peak inspiratory pressure is equivalent to our plateau. So we're gonna use that number. So we're gonna start off by saying 800 divided by 20 minus five. So this is gonna be 800 divided by 15. That gives us a compliance of 53. Now what that tells us is that 53 milliliters per centimeters of water pressure were delivered during the PIPA 5 phase. Now think about that. 53 milliliters per every one change in centimeters of water pressure was the result. Let's see what we have when we look at our peep of 10. So now we're going to go 900 divided by 25 minus 10 would be 15 again. And this number is 60. So when we went to a peep of 10, we recognized that we delivered 60 milliliters per every one change in centimeters of water pressure during the inspiratory phase. Now, when we look at the PEEP of 15, we see that we are going to do 600 divided by 30 minus 15. Again, gives us 15. And we see that the static compliance here is 40. Now, when you're talking about compliance, the larger, the better. The lower the number, the worse the compliance. So this is very interesting. I'm so glad this worked out this way because we recognize that we started off with five. We're getting good volumes. Static compliance was coming in at 53. When we increase the peak to 10, our tidal volumes increased. Our static compliance also increased to 60 milliliters per centimeters of water pressure. So what this tells us is that a peep of five versus a peep of 10, based off of static compliance, a peep of 10 equals better compliance and is a better level of peep for this patient. Now, when we look at 15, we see we get a reduction in static compliance. So what does this tell us? This tells us that we have now entered into a state of over distension. We are now holding the lungs open too high and putting too much volume in on top of that. And it is telling us, wait a second, this peak level of 15 does not help us increase compliance. It actually leads to a reduction in compliance. So we would not want to leave this patient on the peak of 15. We would want to turn them back to where we know the safe and best static compliance was. Now, other things that come in to optimal PEEP, if you want to use that term, is where is your best oxygenation, with your best compliance, with your minimal cardiac effects. Now again, we can't assess cardiac effects right now, but based off of this chart, I think we can all agree that this level right here is the best PEEP that we should be shooting for. So if I turn my PEEP back to 10, I want you to notice what happens.
You're going to see them relax a little, and they're actually going to fall. Right there. That is the best baseline pressure, positive end expiratory pressure, that leads to the best compliance for our patient. We would have to evaluate other parameters to identify that this is indeed the best. Now, we made a big jump from 10 to 15, so perhaps 11 is even better than 10, or perhaps 9 is even better than 10. So we've now narrowed it down to this is good, 15 is bad, 10 is better than 5, but maybe 12 is the best answer. Maybe 9 is even better than 10. And that is the importance of understanding PEEP and understanding how it affects your compliance and finding the absolute best PEEP level for each and every one of your patients. Individualized and personalized to each one of them. So, in summary, what we talked about is what is PEEP? We understand that PEEP is positive in expiratory pressure. It holds the lungs open during the expiratory phase. We also remember that it utilizes Fick's law. It says if we can increase surface area, then we can decrease the thickness of the alveolar capillary membrane, and that will aid in more gas diffusion from within the alveoli into pulmonary circulation and ultimately into arterial circulation. And then the last thing we walk away with is recognizing that changes in PEEP affect compliance. It may get better as we increase it, and perhaps it may get worse as we saw when we went from 10 to 15. So that's PEEP and how we understand what it does, what it is, how it aids oxygenation, and how it affects compliance. This is where you can find me. I'm on all the socials, Respiratory Coach at Instagram. Please come follow me at TikTok, at Respiratory Coach. Twitter at CoachRRT. Send me an email, CoachRRT at gmail.com. I try to get back to you as quick as possible. It gets hard sometimes, but I do my best. And you can always text me at 1-817-968-7035. Join my texting platform where I send out occasional educational, motivational, inspirational. Happy birthdays. How you doing? Thanks for being a part of the RT community. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.